Welcome again to Wickerson Studios. For those that have actually enjoyed my videos, I think I probably haven't shown the true nature of the chaos and ignorance that I actually embody, like most human beings in the world. Um, but that said, what a good beginning. We'll take a look at this sign up for these courses. Uh, Grasshopper Rhino, C Sharp Scripting by Jeremy Graham. I'm not going to steal his intellectual property, but I'm going to show you the power of going into somebody like this. Now, above here, I went into a bunch of series of Warsaw School of Technology and generated these C scripts. I went into Rye Isis site and generated a whole bunch. Uh, what you want to do, and this geometry is probably familiar to people that have taken that course, um, he's produced a ton of C nodes that are great to have as basic little building blocks and Lego blocks, erector sets to what you want to do. Well, what I'm going to do is take those all to disable. I'm going to go back into here into perspective view, pop it back into shaded and say, well, what can we do with these things? And uh, I'm going to condense my Rhino windows, slamming it off here, making it a little smaller. And this is how I think. And, you know, if I get stuck and I make some arrows, it's not going to bother me today. Uh, I want to give credit. I want to say go into those sites. Find out what you need to do, and you'll be wakened up to the power of C scripting. And so let's jump into there and make an enabled code. Now, he's written a script. Now, without me showing the details of that, uh, I obviously see that he's brought in a range. And I've actually gone in here and scripted a few things, and you'll see it says create range and append list. That's not on his script. It's something I've customized, and I'm going to jump in here, and I'm going to call this range because it makes sense as a range tool. It is set to a list item. So it processes the list instead of a uh, single item index. And I'm going to move that over to a double because I'd rather have a script that could take a domain going back into my math tools and popping this in. And I know he doesn't have the time to go into these details, but these details are particular to my own interests. I'm going to type in 1.00 and double that slider and plug that in as the end. And that is the beginning. And oh, here we go. And I'm going to bring that down to like 11. Uh, point one, uh, point one, one, and then my steps. I'm going to make uh, whatever I want as an integer, and I believe it's set as an integer value. Now let's see if it runs. Obviously, the script is having trouble. It's like I don't understand what hello means. Well, we've got to go in because we've made some changes, and you can bypass all of this using and what functions you have to use, unless you have to put in some extra ones. Uh, you can check out the members list if you want that does some magic for you and utility functions. But this is all provided which is the power of going in and using something that's kind of available to you. What did I just do? I just got rid of all the public classes. I just wanted to get rid of that little guy. As you get older, things get smaller in your life, and it gets harder and harder to control. But here's the run script, and I brought in a list, double range, object Y, and object A. And before I do that, I'm just going to go into here and say, I don't even need that Y. So let's go back and open it again. There you go. I've got a double list range, and that means I have to change my script. And let's take the range that's coming in name it that, add one to it, but let's not add one to it. Let's add a number to it. So now we're having fun and we're going to say output the range and this will still be a problem. And this is how you play in C. And if it's not making sense, well, tough cookies, then figure out why it's not making sense. Obviously, I need another input here. I just introduced a variable num. Um, if I bring in a num variable, oops, I did not mean to do that. I meant to write num. Uh, I'm bringing it in as a single item access and I'm bringing it in as an integer and I'm going to add that integer by double clicking and hitting 12 and having a nice number slider that I'm used to playing with in Grasshopper and there we go my script's running again so I can add 12 I can add whatever I want to the end of this list now why would I want to add that to the end of the list I don't know I might go in here and graft it and say okay I've got a bunch of forms I've got my last list item my new list item and this is how you play with C script and it's not going to make it a lot of sense to people because people are like well, what are you doing? Well, last thing an artist wants is somebody in their studio asking them what they're doing. Uh, you're here to just figure things out. I've got some numbers. I've got this last digit that I control as this big digit, whatever I want. And I'm thinking like A, uh, the final list item. So I go back into thinking how I thought. And this is just the nature of what I do. If I grab an index number of double clicking, and I know if I type in negative one, I get the last list item on a list. That's going to pump me out the number 50. And if I don't believe it, um, or number 19, I should say, uh, it's going to grab me the, la the last of that list item. Even though I've grabbed them all, I'm going to have to flatten this again to get to that 19. And what I have is a uh, wonderful graph list of all these, uh, all these numbers. Now, what if I took this data 
And I started to think like creating points. Well, let's create points from 19, 19, 19. Now, if this is making sense to you, then you're probably not following a lot of the video tutorials that I do because I think in attributes, the points to what could drive things. And over here, I have a nice grafted list that if I went in here and I called an index, um, and I've got a plan to my madness, uh, let's call the index number and let's call out negative one. Let's take the list that's grafted here. Now, would that produce what I want? Uh, I probably have to flatten that list again to do that. That's going to give me all the other digits. I could graph that again into a form, and I could pull that into a point, which is fairly interesting, uh, grabbing all of those attributes, X, Y, Z. So I know I've just made a tree list of points. And we've got to zoom in to make this magic happen, which is not so exciting, these points to these points. Um, those points I'm going to grab a little bit of a transformation. The polar array is a wonderful way to these things. So we've just looped them all around in an area. And now let's take all of those points, go into curve. And I'm throwing this out here because I just don't care today. Uh, let's take all those points, connect them to those points. And you'll see we have this crazy point that's a way that'll draw into those points. And uh, because that data is set so high and it's ridiculous, Let's go in here and set 2.00, which will bring that number down. And when we're dealing with the geometry that I can have a little bit of fun with um, as tree data to join these points together. And here they are uh, from all those other points. And what do I end up having as a piece of geometry? Not so exciting. Nothing's really happened. I've just joined a bunch of points into another point, but I've relied on this C script to do it. Uh, the polar array has really done the magic, and I think what I'm going to do is just take my count down to two, so it'll simplify that, and I've got an ability to grab, hmm, let's just grab this uh, as line data, go in the surface, deal in simple surface solids. We know we're dealing with a small uh, number, so let's bring it back down to something really tiny. Let's throw a couple of cap, flat caps on that. Uh, this tool itself could go through another polar array, which is always fun, which I use often enough. There it is. Let's grab ourselves a quad sphere. Uh, this is how I think. I, actually, I can't say I overthink it at all. Quad sphere. Um, man, we'll throw it into a move tool transformation move no, 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 no. Uh, then, then come down and we'll do a little z vector on it so we know where things are moving out of tolerance z i calm down when i actually start to think but i don't think too hard i stopped doing that years ago there we go there's a transformation as we control it let's pull it up like that Let's take this object. Um, we've got a lot of other scripts to play with, uh, but I blame Jeremy Graham for this play because he's inspired it in me. So you may as well blame the people that inspire you. Um, let's go into here, grab these couple of guys here. Whoop. My girl is a little excited. Let's get these out of the way. And what do we have going? This object, this object. Let's do a little Boolean. Uh, see if we can play up something that's kind of fun on an intersection. The Boolean difference. We've got a nice, great object here that we could just take those geometries and erase it from. It's going to slow down our script because it's actually starting to do a Boolean union, so we can relax and have a sip of tea as we wait. And hopefully in 9.2 seconds, we've generated something interesting enough to pull into a bake, uh, group it together. There we go and leave grasshopper because we don't need you anymore and aha i have this geometry hold on a second i've brought it in too much as tree data we're going to want to flatten all of these items it's probably going to take longer the process now another sip of tea as we wait for the profiler to tell us we have to think a lot longer than you anticipated and that's why you keep multiple screens going so you can go up and you can check your profile on all your websites to see if people are even interested at all in what you're doing 
Um, still thinking, oh my gosh. Um, 105 hits in the last 48 hours. Feels all right. We've really slowed this down to a crawl. We might have to hit stop and see where this goes. Five second delay. I know I'm not paying for the fortune, but you'll see what I made. In 43.8 seconds, I made a killer Death Star. And I make this out for Aaron Schmidt because I know he'll be the one that appreciates that. Why would I generate a form like this? Why would I take it to render? And think about that as an object that I might want to make. Well, it's got a lot of polar rays. It's got a lot of data. The only thing I really relied upon was C to produce me a series of points uh, that actually are just these values. And in the end, I've made a piece of geometry that I probably wouldn't have figured out to perfection and uh, <laughs> tolerated such a long running script. So it is a bit of chaos. And it's going from step one of what uh, Jeremy Graham has really tried to offer, which is absolutely outstanding. And so that's that's really where I am in honoring these people that have taught me. Um, what would I do with it? Uh, let's click on here. Let's go into technical. Let's go into pen type and artistic. Let's take this one back to render. Oh, I got a little bit of trouble here. It's angry with me. Oh, it is angry. Just won't even tolerate my behavior right now. But I'm happy with what I generated from a simple script that did something. Uh, we'll group that. We'll change that into a color node. And I just wanted to fully uh, express what a lot of people don't do online. And it's the absolute chaos of playing around with things. And I have no idea why that's running the way it is. Everything else is on disable. We'll get farther into the other scripts but really applying what the possibilities are of being so dangerous as to make a range with an add number of components. Who would have thought that this two-line script, let's make it two lines just to scare the pants off you. Let's bring it back here and tab it in. Uh, just that simple range add number item of what it creatively inspired in me to do, which just makes this horrible form that's just unbelievable try and wrap your head around, let alone make the drawings that, that's uh, associated with this. Uh, wonderful renders. The computer itself is like not asking why, but really nice uh, frameworks for what I'm doing. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to stop for a All right, I think we've uh, managed to make it interesting enough, and there it is, a revolving pool ball that probably didn't need to be made. But as I look through the windows of my mind, I see that this is pretty interesting. And the truth of it all, after all these videos and trying to hide and act a lot cooler than I am, uh, I take a look at someone else's script, I think what it can do, and I generate a geometry from that chaos. So 13 minutes into the honesty of what's going on here, it's incredibly playful. Who's to say what somebody's thinking when they're making crossword puzzles or making or playing Sudoku? But that's a little window into uh, where we are and uh, why we're driven forth into computational arts and thinking what are the possibilities. Now just imagine as I start to slide into these other nodes and what Jeremy Grant has made through teaching you operators, lists, forms who knows what he's even done he's left you with these blank c-sharp nodes that what could they become for you and for wickerson studios this little node became the create range and append list which i've added at least i thought i added oh no i'm afraid if i run it now it's going to lose that title well at least it held it i have no idea why it did uh but i don't have it scripted in there to deal with that um anyway Managed to keep the create range append list, which is a nice little item to list it as. Otherwise, you're stuck in here ungrouping, grouping this, uh, going to your bifocals tool, or possibly saying, okay, this is a create range, yada, yada, yada. Uh, you could do that. Um, but I like this little system of scripting that in. What I have to wonder about is where that went. Did I write that somewhere else? That's interesting. And, you know, I'm rambling on, and I'm continuing because... That's the that's the way I kind of think about this. Uh, let's go up and do component. Actually, let's do component dot message 
dot equals uh, exactly what I said. What did I say? I don't know. We called it uh, uh, range and add append list. I think that's what I call it. Well, I didn't call it exactly that. Let's end it with the correct thing and let's uh, run that. Uh, and hopefully we've got the same type of thing happening. I'm interesting why that's still reading as it was. It's still, oh, still has to process the whole entire script in 46 seconds in order to just make that little change within the C numbered script. Once again, I'm not pulling any punches here. This is the chaos. This is the time spent, which most people don't appreciate while somebody's making a code and script. And you may feel after watching this video, what a waste of time that was. Well, you have to ask yourself while you're online why it's taking you so long to do the things that it's taking you to do. Um, find inspiration from others. Realize that creativity comes from research, and research has to develop, and then has to roll back into that creative element. So here we are. Oh my gosh, waiting at the 16-minute mark for this small component dot message using the .NET framework to add it, and there we go. I've changed the list. I love it. I'm going to go in here and hit save document, exactly what it was, my master one. And uh, what a way to begin and start to understand what you're doing uh, in a playful way. Uh, if I, Like I said, if I like what I've done, I'll go in here and I will group those things together. I'll put them into a nice color code system. Oh, I, that's the one thing in Grasshopper that drives me nuts is I just can't. Maybe because I'm just too old. Uh, get these things to slide around to what I want. Nice little baby blue that says, you've done it. Jeremy Graham has all the respect and authority for making me want to make this thing. But as I peek through to the other side in here, I'm excited about that. 17 minutes of your life. Enjoy it.